It's Palm Sunday. Welcome to our worship service. I know you're stuck in the house. I know family are beginning to get on each other's nerves, but you are alive and you're staying healthy and you're doing everything that you can to make sure you stay that way. So God is good all the time. I'm not going to be able to hear you, but I want you to say that word, that, that response with me. God is good and you say all the time. Welcome to church on Palm Sunday 2020. I'd like to start with some announcements today and get those out of the way. Please uh, turn up the energy and stress strict social distancing. Last week when we recorded, they wanted 10 people or less, other than family members, 10 people or less, and they wanted you to stay six feet away. And now uh, governors and presidents and health officials are saying, even make it tighter. Be strict with your social distancing. Stay six feet away from each other. Don't get in groups larger than two or three. Try to stay away from anybody you don't have to be around. And let's ride through this thing and get healthy. Stay at home as much as possible. I know it's beautiful outside, but the virus is out there too. And don't forget, wash your hands often. Uh, keep. Keep hand sanitizer near you if you have any, and if not, use soap and water. 20 seconds, they say, many times a day. If your hands are dry and cracked, you're probably doing it right, so keep it up. Let's beat this thing. Uh, I'd like to make an announcement. Please consider registering for online giving at the LUMC website. The uh, website will be on the screen in a few minutes, and as has been the case the last two weeks, if you need that information, you can pause this video when you're watching it and write down that address. Consider registering for online giving. It'll make your life easier. And if you want to mail your checks to us, it's 816 Pine Hill Road, P.O. Box 26, Louisa, Kentucky, as you see on the screen. Going to the second slide, I would like to give many thanks to our technical team, the volunteer musicians we have used these three weeks, to my friend and colleague, Reverend Tammy Smith from First United Methodist Church of Louisa for making today and the last two church, uh, church services possible. Thank you for your faithfulness to God in making this an essential ministry in the life of the church. One more announcement. Next Sunday is Easter. You know that part, but here's the interesting part. The LUMC service next Sunday will be special, and you will only find it on, on our website, Facebook, um, so be looking for that. We can no longer meet with the few of us that are meeting in the sanctuary. I'm trying something different. Easter is a crazy time to try something different, but the world is a crazy place. We will be worshiping some way, somehow, from this sanctuary on Easter Sunday morning. Uh, tune in at 11 o'clock, maybe a little early, and you can be a part of worship. Do not forget what next Sunday is. It is the reason you have hope. Amen. For the First United Methodist Church folks, like to remind you that our offerings can be mailed uh, P.O. Box 763 in Louisa or brought to the church or to the parsonage. Please be faithful in supporting the ministries of, the, of our church. Uh, this season will pass and we need to be keeping up with all of our responsibilities. So please get those offerings and gifts and tithes in. Tomorrow, we, since we're recording on, on Saturday, tomorrow on Sunday at 11 o'clock, we'll be trying the drive through worship uh, at Young's Funeral Home parking lot. You will be staying in your cars, and we will worship together, and everybody is invited. We'll try and fill up the parking lot and the streets as much as possible. So if you want to uh, have a chance to get out, and then hopefully enjoy the sunshine for just a few uh, minutes. Come and join us for uh, drive-through worship. 
And then don't forget that your Lenten, your Lenten food collection that you have been in the process of collecting over the last several weeks is coming up. It's going to be, uh, we need it in the church this coming week. So bring whatever you have collected uh, or call me and I will come and pick it up. And all of our donated food will be then placed on the altar for Easter and we will have a blessing over it, and then it will be given over to the food pantry. Thank you. Would you bow your heads? Would you bow your... Would you bow your heads and pray with me, please? Our most gracious Lord, we thank you for loving us. We thank you that Palm Sunday gives us reason to have hope that in seven days our Savior will live again. And because he lives, we will live with you forever. Be with us in this worship service, as all of us are doing things differently than we've ever done them before, because worshiping you is a priority in our life. Help the congregation out there, wherever they might be watching, whenever it might be, in other parts of the world perhaps, because it goes on our website and YouTube, wherever you are, whenever you're watching this, I pray God's best for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Good morning. Would you join me at home in singing Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Hosanna, loud Hosanna, the little children sing through pillared court and temple. The sang their praises, the simplest and the best. From all of it they followed, mid an exultant crowd, the victor palm branch waving and chanting Okay, friends, I'm not going to make you stand up, but if you choose to, feel free. Let us recite together the historic Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Just, just a reminder to everyone at First Church uh, of our giving responsibilities. Please send your, um, your gifts, your tithes, and your offerings to P.O. Box 763 or bring it to the church or bring it by the parsonage. Thank you. There is, go back to the previous slide, okay? Thanks. Here's the address that I told you you would have in a few minutes. Our mailing address for the Louisa United Methodist Church, or as they call us, the Church on the Hill, is 816 Pine Hill Road, P.O. Box 26, Louisa, Kentucky, 41230. And at the bottom of the screen is our online giving, L-U-M-C, at louisaunitedmethodistchurch.org. Thank you for your faithfulness. I want to introduce the video for this morning. It doesn't sound like a Lenten vi video, a, a chorus at first, until you think about how amazing it is that God would come up with a plan such as he came up with to redeem the world. Just as amazing and maybe more is that Jesus would be willing to be nailed to a cross to take away the sins of mankind. Lord, I'm amazed by you, how you love us. You dance over me while I am unaware. You sing
Right there in your home, nobody listening but you and God, say amen. Good morning. Normally on Palm Sunday, I would be standing here and you would be standing or you would be sitting there with me and everyone in the church would have palms. Everybody would have been given palms and we would be waving our palms in celebration of the day. Well, today we're going to talk a little, not so much about the palms, but about the parade that happened and the palms that were there at the parade. Everybody, the scripture tells us that everybody that was in front of Jesus and behind Jesus was waving the palm branches and just enjoying the day and celebration that Jesus was coming into Jerusalem. They had heard already all the wonderful things that Jesus had done and they were so excited that Jesus was coming into Jerusalem here during the holy Passover time. And so they were waving palm branches and they were making a lot of noise in celebration. Just like in, at any parade that you go to, everybody's excited and everybody is, is shouting and, and, and wanting whatever's being, the candy that's being thrown out uh, uh, at them at the parade. And so these, the children and their moms and their dads and just adults, everybody was just so excited. But then scripture tells us that as they came into Jerusalem, the authorities were kind of ticked off that Jesus had come in the way that he did. And so they came to Jesus and they told him to tell everybody to be quiet. But Jesus told them that if they were quiet, that the rocks would shout out. You know, springtime is a great time to, in, to celebrate and to have, to remember Easter and to be a part of uh, the holy season. For spring itself shouts out to us that God is indeed God. We watch as the flowers bloom and the trees uh, bloom and all the beauty of the celebration of spring. So today I want to remind you that even though we may not have, everybody may not have palm branches and we may not be waving them at each other to celebrate, you can still celebrate this holy season. As you go out into your backyards, as you go take uh, rides out into your car and you see all of the spring buddings, uh, everything in bloom, you can remember that God is still God and that he loves you and that you can sing the praises that bring celebration to your home and to your heart. There's a little song that I learned when I was in, at camp and Dan may remember it uh, and so I want I want to sing it for you, and, and maybe Dan will, will remember the song and, and, and join me. It goes, hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for these children who are listening and who are watching. Father, help us all to be children, to have
have the faith of a child and to celebrate your love in all the ways that we can. Father, we thank you. Help us to teach them and help us to learn from them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to be going to the adult prayer time here in just a few minutes, but uh, I, I can't keep this secret. I've got to let you know you're going to be so excited. Tanner's going to be doing a solo in just a few minutes, and he's playing guitar. I didn't know he could play guitar. He never said he could play the guitar. He's learning to play the bass. As it turns out, he can already play the guitar. He's going to be accompanying himself on the guitar and singing a special song just for you in just a few minutes, and I'm excited to hear it. And after that is over, uh, Pastor Tammy will be speaking. She is the pastor of the First United Methodist Church in Louisa, a friend and a colleague. We share this ministry because we share Jesus together. And she'll be bringing the word to us on this Palm Sunday after the, uh, the special music. Would you go with me in, to uh, the Lord in prayer? Father, we, we are taught in seminary and Bible school that you are omniscient. Maybe we've forgotten what that word means, but it means you're all-knowing. And that means though we didn't know that the virus was coming, you did. And, and we could debate why you would allow it to come, but the, the bottom line is that life is sometimes just hard. And this is a hard season of life. You knew it was coming, and you are watching us as we go through this. You knew that this congregation would have to miss Palm Sunday in their home congregations, and Easter we'd have to worship outside or turn on a computer, and some of our members don't even know how to turn on a computer. You knew every struggle we would be going through, and just like the children of Israel who had hard times, and the disciples who had difficult lives and then most of whom died, but died difficult deaths. Life is hard, but it's better, Lord, because you're in it. And I, I'm thinking about young parents and children, and the children are picking on each brothers and sisters and the moms and dads. They're trying not to be frustrated, both with their spouse that they're seeing way more than they're used to seeing, and, and the children. And uh, there are things we just take for granted. Everything from hamburgers to hair dye. And Lord, we've all taken toilet paper for granted forever. And this, this, uh, this emergency that we're living under has given us the opportunity to realize, to see our blessings that were invisible to us before. It's so beautiful outside. And the, the red buds are, are bl blooming, and, and it's just so gorgeous outside. It's hard for us to imagine it's dangerous. But though we don't want to, because we love each other, we're staying indoors as much as we can. We're getting out as little as possible. We're staying at least six feet away from each other. We're trying not to hug. We're trying not to shake hands. Father, we're trying not to scratch our own face, and every time we turn around, we're doing it anyway. We need your help. We need your help to remind us how to do wise things so the things that are happening in California and New York don't even begin to hit us like they've hit them. And the secret is for us to be very, very careful right now. Lord, we probably can't remember if you don't help us. We need to wash our hands way more than we've ever washed before. And we, we, we're lonely for our friends and family. Every time we see somebody from our church out and about, we, 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 we rush to get in their presence and realize we have to stop. And at the same time, some of our neighbors that we don't know real well, they're wearing masks, they're looking worried. And perhaps, Lord, they don't know you as Savior and Lord because I see fear in their eyes. And it, it reminds me, Lord, I'm reminded that you love them just as much as you love any Methodist in Louisa or Baptist or Catholic or Presbyterian or wherever a person might worship. You love the lost so much that you left heaven to provide a plan for them to escape the wages 
of their sin. Just as you are redeeming your church, you want to redeem those out and about who are full of fear and dread and have no relationship with you, or at least a distant relationship that doesn't seem to be enough. So, Father, I'm going to ask you, as only you can do, to draw real near to all of us. Only allow as much pain as, within, as, as is within your will. And please, Lord, use, use all the circumstances of life, even the, the COVID-19 virus, the pandemic that's all around the world. Draw your children back to you and draw the lost into a saving relationship with you. Comfort those who mourn. Be with those family members who have folks in the hospital and they can't visit them and funerals where the loved ones can't come and share the grief. Be our strength in this time where we don't have the strength we used to have. And may we be strong because you are strong and with us. We make this prayer in the name of Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you, Tanner. A Methodist minister was preaching in an unfamiliar church one Sunday morning. And as he stood in the pulpit to, to begin the service, he gently tapped on, on the microphone to make sure that it was, uh, it was on. And he heard nothing, but it was on. And it was working just fine. So he leaned in a little closer to it, and what he thought he was saying to himself, he was actually being said to the congregation, well, there must be something wrong with this thing. And the congregation in that moment, being a well-trained Methodist church people, they immediately responded with, and also with you. I tell that to give us an illustration about the danger of the familiar. We can be so steeped in routine that we simply stop paying attention to what we are doing. It can become dangerous to drive on a on the road of a of a uh, on the road every single day because we can stop being alert to it. We take things for granted and we become lazy in our thinking that because we have driven this road so many times, we could drive it with our eyes shut. And then if something different happens on the road, we may not pay attention to it until it is way too late. But we can take other things for granted as well. A husband and wife can take for granted the things that, that each of them do for their spouse. To the point that before long we don't even they don't even realize that the spouse is doing anything and then it 
we may begin to feel as though we are the only one putting anything into the relationship. A parent can become and take for granted the very sound of laughter and joy and even sibling arguments until the child grows up or their children grow up and move away. We take for granted living in a small town, becoming so used to things that we don't even realize and we don't even notice until things are gone. There's also the danger of taking things for granted during the Easter season. The accounts of the uh, of the triumphant entry into Jerusalem, the cross, and even the resurrection are, are so familiar for most of us that we can easily go through the motions of the celebration without ever allowing the message of those events to touch our hearts, our minds, and our souls. So to challenge us to, to read these accounts, I want us to read them with fresh eyes. Look with me on this Palm Sunday, the account of the triumphant entry, and let us see it not only with fresh eyes, but with an open heart. Reading this morning from the 12th chapter of John, beginning with the 12th verse, and I will invite you to join with me and stand for the reading of God's word this morning. John chapter 12, beginning with verse 12. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna is the king of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it as it is written, Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first his disciples did not understand all of this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they heard that he had, uh, had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. This is a word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Now at first... we should see from this account that this is very much out of the character of Jesus. In all of the gospel accounts of Jesus' life and ministry, we find where he tells those he has healed not to tell anyone. Now, yes, there are times when he is in great crowds healing and speaking with people, but there's never a time when he's wanting the attention. He never puts up a, a, a banner or, or a sign that says, Jesus coming in three days. Jesus always avoided the spotlight. In John chapter 6, when Jesus felt that the people were ready to take him by force and make him king, Jesus simply left town. He was not looking for public demonstrations on his behalf. He was not seeking the spotlight until this day. 
on this day, Jesus even arranged it. In Luke's account, we are told that Jesus had arranged for the use of a donkey. The event even tells us that, that the disciples um, were to tell the owner exact words that Jesus told them to tell him of why they were taking the donkey. See, this was not a spontaneous demonstration. Jesus intended it to happen. But why? Why was Jesus orchestrating this grand demonstration at this particular time? It was not to throw himself a party. For when Jesus even caught his first glimpse of Jerusalem, Scripture tells us that he didn't stop to savor the event, but rather he wept. The procession was not frivolous. It was purposeful. It was not provoked by vanity, but by compassion and love. Why? Because it was time. It was time for Jesus to do what he came to do. In verse 23, we see where scripture tells us that the hour has come. God was determining the timing, not humanity. The religious leaders of the day had previously decided that it was unwise to make a move against Jesus during the time of the Passover celebration. They felt that it would cause too much of an uproar with the people. So they were willing to back off and to wait until things cooled down a bit. But all of that changed after this parade. Why was it important to Jesus that these men arrest him during Passover? Because it was God's plan for Jesus to die at the same time as all the other sacrificial lambs. See, Passover was a yearly celebration commemorating the freeing of the Jewish people from slavery in Egypt thousands of years earlier. And every year they, they remembered this event and they celebrated and they did everything that they were supposed to remember. They retold the story and they sacrificed the lamb. On that first night, that first Passover, God struck every firstborn of the Egyptians. And God told the Israelites to slaughter a lamb and to take the blood of the lamb and to apply it to their door stops, their doorposts of the homes. And this, this, this blood of the lamb would be recognized by the angel of death and would, the, the, the angel would pass over the homes that had the blood and would protect the firstborn child that lived within that home. It was meant to be a picture that pointed to another lamb who would die in our place to free us from a much greater slavery, that slavery to sin and death. It is likely that that very same time that Jesus was dying on the cross, the lambs in the city of Jerusalem were being slaughtered for the Passover feast. See, Jesus was the Lamb of God for the sins of the world. Jesus wanted it to be clear that this was a, a voluntary act. The religious leaders, those who, who wanted him gone, they had no power over him. They could not take him until he allowed them to. Knowing what was before him, 
the betrayal, the humiliation, the suffering, and the death, he chose to come to Jerusalem. Such is the magnificent love of our Savior. Jesus was not an unwilling victim of a, of a vicious plot. He was a willing sacrifice for all who would believe. Now there may be some of, of you listening who wonder if God could possibly love you. Perhaps you have failed him. Maybe you are so ashamed that, of what you have done in your life that it, you just think that it is impossible for you to even imagine that God could still care and love you. But my friends, take a, a look with fresh eyes at the parade into Jerusalem. Jesus is not surprised by our failures. He came to Jerusalem in order to deliver us from such things. He knows what you and I have done. And he wants to make us clean to restore us and to set us free. His invitation is simple. Come to me, all you who are heavy burdened and I will give you rest. Have you done that? Or are you still hiding from the very one who wants to love you more than you have ever been loved before? Maybe it's time to stop hiding and just start believing. Maybe life is difficult for you right now, even more so than normal. Maybe your life is, is characterized by, by loneliness and a, and a feeling that you have been forgotten. But look at the parade and see it with new eyes and an open heart. When Jesus rode that donkey into the city of Jerusalem, you and I were on his mind. The death that he willingly suffered was a sacrifice designed to make us part of his family. You may feel alone and deserted and unimportant, but you were significant enough to Jesus for him to go on a cross on your behalf. He knows you and he loves you. On the day when Jesus walked toward Jerusalem, the disciples were unaware of what God was doing. They missed the significance of that day. And it would only be later uh, that they would come to see that God's hand was in all of it. And that it was taking place. And that may be true in your life as well. The fact that you and I don't understand sometimes what's going on in our life doesn't mean that God isn't working in your life. God knows the plan. And though you and I may not understand it, we can trust him. In fact, God doesn't require us to understand, thank goodness. He only asks us to trust him. Have you been taking the things for God, of God for granted? Are you listening to God's word but hearing nothing? Perhaps it is time for you to read once again with a fresh 
and pivotal accounts of how God has revealed his love to you and his plan for you. Take a fresh look at this familiar event and the events that happened during this upcoming week. For it can change your heart and your life forever. Let us pray. Father God, again we thank you. And we praise you for your love, for your grace, and for your mercy. Father, help us to, to read and to understand this very familiar passage and event with, with open and fresh eyes and with an open and heart and an open soul. Help us, dear Father, to realize it was all planned that Jesus willingly gave himself for us because he loves us so much. Father, we thank you. Help us to trust you, to believe in you, and to give our hearts and lives to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross.
today. I'm going to be like a daddy or a grandpa or a nosy neighbor. Okay, keep washing your hands. Wash way more than you need to. Keep your hands away from your face if at all possible. Stay six feet away from each other. Stay home as much as you can. And let this thing go around us instead of through us. I almost left out something important. It's Holy Week starting tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We always have a Holy Week service, and it only lasts about 30 minutes, and then we have food together. Well, those plans are completely changed now. We can't eat together. We can't meet together in a sanctuary. We're not even going to be meeting together on Easter. In reality, it'll be a virtual worship service next week, but we found a solution. If you go to the louisabaptist.com website, why would we want to do that, Brother Dan? Because the Baptist Church is using their tech team, and we are going to be live streaming Holy Week services Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'll be speaking one day. Pastor Tammy will be speaking. Some of the other pastors of our, of our ministerial association will be speaking. And all you have to do is go to louisabaptist.com. I suspect it will be able to be watched later on after it's recorded, but you can be with us virtually live tomorrow at noon. We're going to have Easter whether the enemy likes it or not. And Holy Week at noon, we can do this. It'll be a little different, but we can do it, and we're going to. Would you receive the benediction? Father, we think we're having it rough until we look at that crown of thorns. We think we're making sacrifices until we remember where Jesus was just before he was born in that stable and laid in a manger. He was at the right hand of the Father. We think we've got a difficult Holy Week, and then we remember what Good Friday was all about. Perhaps some of us are anxious and think there is no hope. But wait, Easter is a day of miracles and resurrection. Not only did Jesus heal the sick while he was here, but after he was resurrected, the disciples started doing it too because there's just no end to the goodness of God. Father, as we bring this service to a close, I pray a prayer of blessing on those that are alone on those that have been around their family more than they ever have been before. I pray a prayer of blessing for children who are bored and want to go to school. They never thought they'd say that, but some of them probably are. I pray for those parents who say, I love my kids, but I'm going to smack them if I don't get away from them soon. It's not going to happen anytime too soon. So hang in there. Hang in there. I know it's tough, but not as tough as Friday. I know it's rough, but not as rough as Jesus' life. You can do this. You can have victory. He bought it on the cross of Calvary, and he proved it early Sunday morning with the empty tomb. So walk close to God, and his power will rub off on you. We can do this because Christ is with us. And all God's people said, Amen.